now the voice of Navy midshipman football. He also calls games for the Washington Nationals. He's a Swiss Army Knife broadcaster, if uh, we get right down to it. His name is Pete Medhurst on the Deseret First Credit Union hotline via Zoom. Pete, welcome to BYU Sports Nation. How are you? I'm doing great, Spencer and Jerem. Great to be with you. Third meeting all-time schedule between the Cougars and midshipmen. Uh, just looking at it uh, from a two-and-a-half-week-out uh, lens, what do you think of the matchup between Navy and BYU? Well, I mean, if you think about it, it's Labor Day night. It's national TV. It's uh, two national programs. And I think that's the thing uh, to stress here. This game only comes together for a national TV audience if you have two brands, obviously this game was supposed to be Navy and Notre Dame. So how do you replace Navy and Notre Dame? The best thing you can do is go find another national program. And obviously BYU fits that bill. The Cougars obviously needed games. So it did not take Chet Gladchuk and Tom Holmo very long, uh, I think, to put this game together. More importantly for both programs, now it's a great opportunity Labor Day night to showcase uh, themselves uh, to the en entire country coming up here. It's kind of funny when we talk about, you know, games that are in the 2030s now, and it's like, wait, this felt like it came together in 24 hours, which is hilarious. So it's like, why does it take so long? But also, you just mentioned uh, perhaps the biggest storyline in this game to me, besides, hey, we're playing football COVID pandemic, is the spotlight on this game. Uh, obviously, Navy used to this with the Navy Army game on CBS if you're owning that space right on, on a weekend. But this is going to be a game that everybody is watching if you love football. Yeah, no question about it. And I think, uh, you know, that's the that's the attractiveness for both teams to make the game happen uh, is you've got a chance to showcase your program now uh, to the entire country. And if you go look at Navy's roster, this is a roster that comes together from all parts uh, of the United States of America. And uh, that's one of the reasons why Navy has never shied away from playing great competition. We moved into a league. We weren't independent, obviously, uh, for our entire football existence. We moved into a league so we could play great people on a weekend and week out basis. Our program is on TV every single weekend. We are on over the air network television in one way, shape or form. And that's the reason why we did it. And in this opportunity where we have seen others go out and basically, um, you know, grab an FCS team if they can to, to fill a spot, we wanted to play somebody and we wanted to play an opponent as good as we could get um, to fill the void. Uh, for Notre Dame, who choose to play, chose to play by the ACC rules uh, this season. And we understand that. And I think that in this, you know, 2020 season, you're just putting together a schedule if you're a school in any way, shape, or form. For Notre Dame, they had to live by the ACC rules this year. It's the only way they were going to be able to put together uh, a full schedule. So, again, the attractiveness in going out and getting uh, a Brigham Young uh, who's willing to come to your place where you were going to have the game anyway um, certainly fits the bill. And I, again, the national TV spotlight uh, is just uh, tremendous uh, for both schools. The play-by-play -play man for Navy football, Pete Medhurst, with us on BYU Sports Nation. What type of game atmosphere do you expect on uh, Monday night, September 7th, with now no fans allowed announced in the game at Annapolis? If you, if you have watched any of Major League Baseball so far, um, I think that's exactly what you're going to get. I think you're going to get, you know, a lot of, you're going to be able to hear a lot of Nat sound. You're going to be able to hear some things out there uh, <laughs> on the football field. Uh, what those words will be, we, we don't have any idea until we see <laughs> yeah, the we game. Do. <laughs> but, yeah, right, exactly, it's football. But, uh, look, I mean, you're going to, you're going to, we've, con we've learned to consume sports in a completely different way here. Uh, during this pandemic. And I think, you know, this is going to be the exact same way. And I think, you know, maybe later on uh, in October, uh, November, uh, you know, I I've got, you know, my in-laws, I got in-laws that live right there uh, in the Salt Lake City area. And, you know, for a while there, they couldn't understand why all of us back on the East Coast were uh, in such a panic of this pandemic and wearing masks and social distancing and all that other stuff. And, um, you know, I mean, here on the East Coast, because of the population density, uh, I think right now the safest thing uh, for everybody involved is, is the way the Naval Academy is going, at least early in the season now, and, and that is to, um, you know, not allow fans in at all. wouldn't be fair to all of your season ticket holders if you could not let everybody in uh, at this point. So I, I think maybe, you know, we're hoping if the numbers get better, uh, later in the season to be able to have a uh, small percentage of fans eventually come into the stadium. But, uh, 
Um, otherwise, essentially what you're going to have, in my mind, is like a scrimmage atmosphere uh, where at least at Navy, our practices are open to the public. Anybody can walk in. If you got an idea, you can get on campus. You can come watch practice Monday through Wednesday, any day of the week. And uh, it's going to kind of have that, that scrimmage-like atmosphere, I think, around it, except um, you're going to be trying to win the game in this uh, particular situation. It will be odd. You've got to create your own energy. I think that's going to be a key uh, for both teams. Uh, you're going to have to create your own energy because there isn't going to be a crowd there to, to lift you up, uh, you know, in key situations. So um, that to me will be the biggest thing is, is how do the players generate uh, that energy in that game when you walk into an empty building and, and you know, in our case, there's not 35, 36,000 people there to, to cheer you on, uh, on on Labor Day night. Obviously, uh, Ken Niamatololo has been a guy that BYU fans have known for a long time as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. He's in Meet the Mormons prominently. He's been so successful. Uh, and now he matches up with BYU, a job that he at least interviewed for a few years ago when Kalani Sitake ended up getting that job. So it's this is a fun matchup. We have Polynesian dudes who happen to be members of the same church, who happen to be Laie boys. Uh, this is going to be a fun one with those two. No doubt. And I, I you know, I... I I am not, you know, afraid to tell Arizona uh, and BYU they made grave mistakes when they didn't do whatever it took to hire Ken Niamata Lolo. Um, he's the greatest leader of men I've ever seen. Um, he's the most genuine individual in, in college athletics I've ever been around. Uh, what you see from him is what you get. There is no false bravado. He wears his emotions on his sleeve, loves his players dearly like all of them uh, are his sons. And that's what I like about Coach Niamata Lolo. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, our practices are open. He tells his coaches on Sunday, go home, be, be husbands, be fathers. If we can't accomplish what we're trying to do, you know, six days a week, it's not going to matter what we're doing on that seventh day. Um, you know, he, he's had coaches that have been with him for a long time. And I think that is the biggest testament. The players constantly change. We know that every four years you're going to cycle through uh, players because they graduate in our case they all go on to be members of the fleet defend our country uh and do amazing things from a leadership perspective but the four years of leadership they get from him and more importantly the coaches that choose to stay here and work with him because of the incredible environment that he, he creates and fosters here at the naval academy i think that's the biggest compliment that you can pay him that people want to stay here and work for him instead of always constantly looking for the next biggest job uh out there and I, I still to this day, especially say Arizona made a huge mistake allowing one player um, to talk them out of hiring him because he would have done great things in the Pac-12. He would have done amazing things for Arizona. And it's Navy's win um, that, that he is able to stay here because his track record here uh, speaks for itself uh, with what he's done winning uh, from a consistency standpoint. Um, losing, here, losing seasons here have become... Uh, much the exception than the norm, which they were uh, at one time. And it's a testament to Ken's leadership, not only as a football coach, but as a human being to retain his players, retain his coaches, and buy in and share in the mission of what the United States Naval Academy is all about. It's rare. It's rare to do that uh, here, and his results speak for themselves. Were you surprised in 2015 that he didn't get the BYU job at that point? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, understanding some of the dynamics that took place there, um, I understand why he's still at Navy. And that's the Kenny was in a win win situation. Yeah. Obviously, Brigham Young and obviously um, his religion means an awful lot to him. He talks about that uh, all the time. I have a great relationship with Coach, and, and we've talked about that uh, at times. Again, that's a, another reason why on Sundays he wants his guys to get out of the building. Don't be here. Um, you know, go be those family men and, and, and fathers and husbands uh, that, that you need to be. But, you know, at the same time, uh, he wasn't just going to leave Navy uh, because it was BYU calling. Um, you know, I, I think everything had to be uh, just right for him to leave an amazing situation uh, that he had at the Naval Academy. And uh, as a result, you know, uh, in many ways, as coach will tell you, you know, God steers you in, in the directions that you should go. And uh, in this case, uh, after a lot of prayer and, and thought, you know, he chose to stay uh, at the Naval Academy. And obviously the Naval Academy 
uh, is the great beneficiary um, for being able to keep him. Yeah, no question about that. Navy play-by-play man Pete Medhurst with us on BYU Sports Nation. Coach Niamatololo expressed some uncertainty last week about how ready Navy will be based on the altered and understandably shortened training camp. What type of Navy team do you expect to show up on Labor Day night? Uh, I, I think, look, there, there's no question they'll be prepared. Um, they're one of the best prepared teams in the country each and every Saturday. And again, like I said, our practices every year are open. You know, everybody has the same film. I mean, nobody's got secrets from anybody unless you add a play or something specifically for uh, a, a certain team because you see them line up a certain way or, or whatever. You know, so many of these coaches nowadays overthink this, uh, you know, closing your your program up like Fort Knox uh, and things <laughs> of that nature. I mean, it, so they get it, it's gotten way too serious uh, in some respects. I know the team will be prepared. I know we're going to run the triple option and we're going to we're going to line up. We're going to try and block you. We're going to try and tackle you uh, and we're going to try and run the football uh, in a perfect world. Uh, we'd run the football 100% of the time. Um, but I would, I would say, I would say, um, Dalen Morris, our quarterback, and I, I'll never forget, I was sitting in the, in the room with Ivan Jasper, our offensive coordinator, when we looked at his recruiting tape uh, before he ever arrived at the Naval Academy. And the excitement that Ivan had in watching that tape, and, and Dalen is going to give us an opportunity, uh, not that we will do it a lot, but he has a cannon for an arm. Mm. He will allow us to make plays uh, in the passing game when it warrants. We're not just going to do it because Dalen can throw. We're going to run the football first. There's no question about that. But he's a guy that will give us an opportunity on third and long situations. We have one of the best wide receivers in the American Athletic Conference in Michael Cooper. Ryan Mitchell's a tremendous uh, receiver. Uh, Mark Walker uh, would probably be the third in that group right now. So we've got probably one of our best receiving cores we've ever had to go with a quarterback who can throw the football. Uh, so third and long is, is never been, uh, you know, a, a, a hamstring situation for us. We're, we're, we're not hamstrung in those situations, but now we have a quarterback that can certainly give Ivan Jasper from a play calling perspective, a lot more options in those situations to make defenses have to prepare for it. And, you know, again, I, I think we'll be prepared. It's our second year under new, Defensive coordinator Brian Newberry, who did an amazing job. The analytics of our defense a year ago, if you go back and look at them, I mean, we were in a top 10 in some categories, and we had not scratched top 10 in uh, defensive categories in a long, long time. You probably have to go back to when George Welsh was coaching here in the 70s, um, you know, when we had analytics that looked like that on defense. Um, and he's got nine of the 11 guys got uh, a lot of snaps last year. Many of them started. So, the fact that so many of those guys are returning, um, it's very exciting. We've got one of the best linebackers in the country in Diego Fago. We've got a couple of really good corners, a um, couple of really good safeties. Uh, that a second year in this system uh, is going to be, uh, I think, terrific. And I know Coach Newberry is excited, to, and the players, more importantly, you listen to the players. The players are the ones that are excited about the second year in this new system uh, and what they're going to be able to do and the fact that they're going to be able to do more um, it's, it's really an exciting time, uh, I think, for our defensive guys. And we rarely ever talk about that because the triple option takes so much of the spotlight. But I'm really anxious to see how our defensive guys perform this year because th they're very enthusiastic about being able to play under Coach Newberry for a second season. Pete Medhurst, play-by-play -play man for Navy, giving us insight into the post-Malcolm Perry era of Ken Niamatololo Navy football. Pete, it's great to catch up with you. And uh, we uh, look forward to... Hopefully, at least at least me, because I'm hopefully going to be there crossing paths with you in about two and a half weeks. Look forward to it. Should be a great game. All right, Pete Medhurst on the Deseret First Credit Union Hotline. Deseret First, you know why we show how. They were tied.